there's value in uh, in learning all that, but really we're in it to win it. We've, we put a team together uh, to, to win the victories, to learn how to play at a winning level. Usually the reward for winning on teams in athletics in this life is some kind of a temporary title or a trophy or a prize. The purpose of the team, though, that God formed when Tanya and I got married 30, over 30 plus years ago, or when you got married, has much more important eternal things in mind, has much more uh, eternal purpose and implications uh, for the winning marriage and the winning team. In fact, when we win in our marriages, greater things happen and greater things result than just winning a worldly title or a temporary award. And that's really what I want us to see this morning. And I'm going to, I'll mention some ways that we can have that winning team. But the first thing I want us to see is that when we win in our marriages, next generations, future generations benefit. This is just not a temporary thing. This is not just a trophy that we set up on the mantle and it's good for uh, till it gets dusty and needs to be clean. Uh, we're talking about one of the primary reasons for marriage given in God's Word is to produce the next generation of God's people. There's a much bigger picture than just today. We're to send out into this world as godly moms and dads, as as Christian homes, as Christian marriages, as a team that God put together, we're to send out into this world salt and light and the testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want you to see in Genesis chapter 1, and we'll show that on the screen, verses 27 and 28, the Bible says there, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Uh, one of the purposes of marriage, and really in God's eyes, one of the primary purposes of marriage has a long term goal in mind. In fact, has eternal benefits in mind, and that is the right teamwork in marriage provides the context for the next generation of Christians to be born and to be trained and to be sent off into the world. The home is the incubator for all of that to happen. It's the place where nurturing and sending out of the next generation of preachers and missionaries and Christian businessmen and businesswomen and godly moms and dads uh, come from. And to do that well, the way God intended, it, it, our marriages must be healthy and our homes must be functioning well. We've got to be a good, solid team together to get the results that God has intended to, to get. The opposite of functioning well is a term named dysfunctional. And we've heard that terminology, a dysfunctional home or a dysfunctional marriage. or That simply means it's just not working right. It's just not it's just not blending and working together the way God intended it to. And many uh, have a, a dysfunction in a marriage and in a home and do not send out healthy Christians into this world. Some marriages are so dysfunctional that the kids don't have a chance. That's not even on the radar. Mom and dad are just trying to survive day to day and really training and nurturing and loving and preparing their children uh, to go out into the world in a healthy way is not even on the radar because they're just trying to survive themselves. In fact, uh, Peter mentions this in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. He says, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them, our wives, according to knowledge. In other words, we need to learn each other. 
Uh, it's, we, we've heard this over and over again. Uh, male and female are two very different uh, beings and have two very different ways we look at things. And so we've got to be, have understanding and we've got to learn and be knowledgeable about our husband, about our wife. He goes on to say, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. And here's what I want you to see. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. By the way, don't, don't gloss over that very last phrase, that your prayers be not hindered. Did you understand that if your marriage is not right, if a husband and wife are not right in their relationship together, that it hinders both of our prayers? Uh, we can't get our prayers answered the way we need to if there is a wedge or if something's not right in the marital relationship. And so that ought to encourage us to make sure we have that uh, thing right. Now, uh, what I want you to see though, he says, as being heirs together of the grace of God. And here's what I want us to see. Our marriages must be right because of what is at stake, and that's the next generation. Uh, we're heirs together, the Bible says, of the grace of life. Uh, a husband and wife bring new life into this world. There is no greater partnership than that. There is no higher calling than that but to be a team that brings new life. I see a new life all around the auditorium and some of the new babies that have been born on our church family and nothing more exciting than that. And there's nothing, not a greater responsibility given by God to a man and a woman than to have the kind of teamwork that brings that about. And not just the physical life, but also train and nurtures that little bundle of joy. I wrote down here, uh, the job doesn't end when that little precious cargo is delivered into the home. In fact, those of you that have your little ones uh, here at church this morning, you understand the work is just beginning uh, when you leave to go home from the hospital. And it's more than just the physical work of changing diapers and teaching them uh, how to care for themselves. It's also a heavy uh, spiritual work as we teach them and train them to be able uh, to go off and prepare these little ones for life. Ephesians tells us that we're to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Deuteronomy uh, tells us that we're to teach them and talk about the Word of God uh, with them at home uh, when we lie down and when we rise up and we're to teach them. Proverbs 22, 6, the Bible says that we're to train up a child in the way that he should go so that when he's old, he will not depart from it. And so there's much at stake for mom and dad to function together lovingly as a team that's healthy and working together uh, for this big picture. When mom and dad are functioning as a healthy team, the result will be healthy Christian young people heading out into the world to begin the process all over again. And it's so important that our children see within the walls of our homes real, genuine Christianity. It's so vital that they see in us a loving relationship, a healthy relationship, that they see in us a genuineness in our love for the Lord uh, so that they can learn. It is important that authentic Christianity is lived and taught at home so our children are equipped to go out and change the world. I was thinking about this, and I've pastored long enough now to know uh, sometimes the challenge that teenagers can bring into a home. And, and I've seen way too many Christian parents that are just hoping to survive the teenage years. I mean, they, we counted a victory if we can just get them out of the house at 18 and they're still alive and we're still alive. And we count that a victory. Amen? And some of you understand what I'm talking about. Can I say this? We, that is such a low bar when it comes to Christian parenting. 
Our, our goals and our vision and our approach ought to be so much higher than that. Uh, we, ought to, uh, we ought to see our role and our responsibility. And we should desire to equip them and to train them to be healthy, productive members of society and a beacon of hope and a beacon of Christianity uh, to this world as they leave our homes and go out into the world. Our hope, and I'm talking about personally now, uh, Mrs. Toole and I, our hope is that our children are prepared to do greater things than we ever could for the Lord Jesus Christ and for His kingdom and for His ministry. And that is a goal, that's God's goal for parents, for moms and dads, working together as a team to send out healthy uh, Christian children into the world. But there's also another aspect of this. In fact, turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 18. Because not only does this healthy team uh, impact the next generation and generations to come, uh, we're, we're thinking now we had the privilege of watching our three granddaughters some on Saturday afternoon getting ready for the wedding and all the pictures and things that were going on. And I couldn't help but just, just pray. Uh, that God would bless those little girls, that God would uh, just equip them and, and help them and, and just help them to get everything they needed to get from a loving uh, family, from loving parents, from loving grandparents, so that when it's time, they're ready to go and they're ready to live the Christian life uh, way beyond what we could ever imagine. But not only that, when we're winning as a team in our marriages... There is other benefits. Not only uh, do, are we trying to win, as in uh, sports in our day, a temporary award or a temporary title, but when it comes to our marriages uh, in our team, the church of God and the work of God benefits as well. When our marriages are healthy, our church ministry life and our and our working for the cause of Christ benefits as well. You mark it down when when a family begins to 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 lag or to kind of drop out in their ministry life, in their church life, in their spiritual life. It is a direct function to everything not working correctly at home as a team that God intended it to do. But I want you to look at Acts chapter 18, 1, because here we're given a New Testament church example of a married couple that functioned as a great team for God's glory and for His work. Look at verse 1 there. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. So we see Aquila and Priscilla, and we've heard of these two throughout the years uh, from our Bible reading and Bible study. He goes on to say, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, because Paul uh, did the same kind of work that they did, uh, he abode with them and wrought or worked for their occupation. They were tent makers. And what I want us to see that in Aquila and Priscilla, we see a married couple functioning as a team, serving the Lord together as a team. They helped Paul start the church in Corinth. That's what that is talking about in verse 1 and in verse 2. In verse 3, they provided employment and a place to stay for the Apostle Paul. They reached out to him and helped him and encouraged him along the way. They exhibited Christian hospitality in the earliest stages of the church. Uh, before there was much of a church, they, they opened up their home and they reached out and they said, we want to be a part of this. And Paul, we want to help you in this endeavor that God has called you to. And we want to be a part. And so uh, we want to get involved in this. Uh, they helped 
any way they could with the gifts and the resources that God had given them. And through the years, this dear couple was such a blessing to the church of God and was such a blessing to Paul and other preachers and their own church that he often told others of their example and of their testimony as a way to encourage others. In fact, look at Romans chapter 16. Look at Romans chapter 16, and we'll put it up on the screen there. He said in verse 3, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. And we won't uh, read the rest of that for time. But Paul said to these uh, folks, he said, they are my helpers in Christ Jesus. He said, for years now, they have helped the work of God move forward. They have helped churches get established. They have helped me personally in ministry. They've been a help to others. In verse 4, Paul said, not only do I owe them a great debt of gratitude, but he said also all the other churches of the Gentiles owe them a debt of gratitude because without this dear couple, is what Paul was saying, without this dear couple, none of this would be possible, talking about all of the churches, all of the outreach to the Gentiles of the day and of the land. And even in verse 5, they were starting a brand new church at this time in their life in their own house, and what a testimony of a highly functioning marriage and a team, a husband and wife who worked as a team for the glory of God and were being used of God in a great way. You know, so often we hear in our day, in our contemporary day, we read about a couple like Priscilla and Aquila and we say, yeah, but it's just a different day. I mean, you just don't understand. It's a different day. I've heard this often that uh, you just, in our day, you have to choose between having a healthy marriage and a healthy home or serving the Lord because you can't do both successfully. Well, I want to say that's God's plan for us to do both successfully. Uh, That's part of God's plan. And we see it's possible in God's Word. By the way, that's just not Bible teaching. In fact, that's oftentimes man's rationale, and it's usually, I'm not going to overstate this, but oftentimes promoted by people who have experienced failure in the home or in ministry or even oftentimes in both places. And so God created an ordained marriage and the home, and He wants us to be successful in it. He wants us to be a winning team in it because next generations benefit. He also ordained and created the local church. Hey, the church is God's idea. The church is God's plan. It's not something man came up with. Now man has a tendency to kind of pervert things and take it in ways that God never intended, but God created the local church and His plan is for marriages to be healthy and functioning well as a team so that we in turn can serve in the context of our local church. And in Priscilla and Aquila, we see that's exactly what they did. Look at one more place. Look at 1 Corinthians 16 and look at verse number 19. The Bible says, the churches of Asia salute you. He said, Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord. If you remember, he's writing to the Corinthian church. That's where uh, they started that church there. Aquila and Priscilla then uh, would kind of move as the Lord led them. They really became came church planters. And, uh, and look what he said, with the church that is in their house. And so once again, I don't know how many, I didn't take the time to really study out how many churches Aquila and Priscilla were responsible in starting But what an example of a husband and wife who had a good relationship together and understood that God intends for us to make an impact in this world through local church ministry. Now, I want to encourage each of us this morning 
to build our lives and our families around uh, the Lord, the work of God, and His local church. I mentioned earlier some of the hallmarks, some of the characteristics of healthy teams. And I mentioned things like highly functioning teams have certain things in common. And uh, we've all heard the saying that there's no I in team. And uh, spell it out, T-E-A-M, there's no I. I is the individual, but healthy teams are more concerned about the big picture, about the team functioning well together. And in a marriage, that we see that all the time, where one partner or the other uh, kind of has their own agenda and has their own ideas and is very selfish in the way that they approach life and marriage. And that's not the winning formula for a team. Someone said on a healthy team, the name on the front of the jersey is more important than the name on the back of the jersey. And what he's talking about there is usually the name on the front of the jersey is the name of the team. And the name on the back of the jersey is the name of the individual player. And when you get a team poisoned by an individual that is only concerned about his stats and his recognition and his awards that he receives, uh, you have a, a, you don't have the formula for a winning team. And so great teams are more concerned about the team than the individual. They're more concerned about team group accomplishments than individual accomplishments. And great teams are always striving for a common goal. Uh, They're always working together to reach that goal. Great teams pick each other up and have each other's back and hold each other's hand and hold each other accountable as we serve the Lord in this life. Now, I said all that to say this. On the flip side, unhealthy and dysfunctional teams also have some defining characteristics really that ever keep them from ever winning and ever seeing these effective uh, accomplishments take place. And selfishness is at the top of that list. Boy, individual agendas in the home is unhealthy. It will, it will not allow us to function in the way that will produce godly children and sending them off into the world. It'll certainly hinder the work of God in the church of God. And so I want to say this morning, if you're not on the same page, get on the same page. Amen. And I'll tell you what page we ought to be on. We ought to be on God's page. Amen. We ought to find out what God says about marriage and about getting along and about our roles and about uh, having a healthy team. Individual Individual agendas derail great teams. Each member doing their own thing, having their own goals is, is a detriment to the team. And to have the winning team and the winning results we want to have with our children in church ministry as a whole, we must become a winning, highly functioning team in our marriages and in our homes, uh, this is kind of corny, but I want to end with this. Someone said, gave an acronym for team. Together, everyone achieves more. And I want to say, if your marriage is splintered and you're going in two different directions, you're not going to accomplish what you want to in this life. In fact, in fact the children will suffer. God's work will suffer. Uh, your relationship certainly will suffer. But healthy marriages achieve so much more in this life. Achieve so much more enjoyment in the team dynamic. Achieve so much more in the, in the realm of their children and preparing them and sending them out into life and accomplish so much more in the work of, of God's ministry and God's kingdom work. And so I said all that, I just want us to be a healthy team that God intends us to be in our marriages. Well, let's work together. Let's have a common goal. Let's find, let's get, keep Christ at the center. Let's, let's braid those three, intertwine those three individual ropes until it's that threefold cord that Solomon spoke about that could never be broken and is healthy 
and has eternal benefits for the next generation, the generation beyond that, and for eternity in the work of God through the local church.